Good evening. We start with football tonight and four K-Man footballers left today for England to begin a training stint with Ashford Town Middlesex. And last evening, Mark Ebanks, Teron Wood, Donald Solomon and Luigi Hernandez got their final words of advice and instruction from Minister of Sport, the Honourable Mark Scotland, Football Association President Jeffrey Webb, Technical Director Carl Brown, other football officials, family and friends at the CIFA offices at Prospect. The four young men and Coach Brown left today for England. While there, they will work out for the Ashford Town officials and for other teams in England with the chance possibly uh, playing for a team in the future. And according to Coach Brown, he wants to be the only one coming back to Grand Cayman in December. So we wish those boys the best of luck. On the pitch, Elite extends their lead at the top of the Football Association Premier League standings. Elite beats Future 2-0 last Sunday. East End causes the biggest upset by beating Georgetown 3-1. Bodentown and reigning champions Scholars International also victorious in round six. So here's a look at the football standings after six rounds, with Elite jumping out to 16 points and maintaining their unbeaten record this season. Bodentown trails on 10 and Roma has 9. Georgetown and first-timers East End hold down the middle spots with eight points each ahead of Tigers and Scholars on seven. And Future has two points at the bottom of the table. Switching from football to some cricket news now, Jamaica logs their second win of the T20 Challenge competition at the Smith Road Cricket Oval last Sunday, easing past English and Irish Lions by one wicket. Batting first, the Lions got up to 111 for two off their 20 overs, led by an unbeaten 45 from Chris Turner. Ian Rotsey chipped in with 28. In reply, the Jamaicans squeezed home at 112 for nine. Garth Bryan led the charge with 36. He has scored more than 100 runs in two games so far of the T20 Challenge competition. This Sunday, home team came on meets Barbados at 2.30 p.m. And technical director for the national program, Theo Cuffey, is urging all cricket fans to come out and support each week in your national colors. I think it's exciting. Um, people can align themselves very much with their home country. And in so doing, you know, their, their enthusiasm is better. And uh, people are motivated to represent, you know, and feel very conscious of the fact that they can now associate, even if it's just for one weekend, with their, their fellow, fellow countrymen. Seven teams are competing in this year's Challenge Trophy Cricket Tournament with locals representing their respective countries each weekend at Smith Road. So go out and support the cricket this weekend. To the water now, the Pirates Week Sea Swim came back with a bang over the weekend. For 30 years, the Pirates Week Swim has been a staple on the swimming calendar. And last Saturday morning, 40 swimmers jumped in and enjoyed the pristine conditions on Seven Mile Beach. One of those was World Open Water Champion Alex Mayer, who was the first home in just under one hour. And while the swimmers enjoy the cool waters, our runners prepare to feel the heat when they go to hell and back this Sunday for the Andy World Pirates Week 10K. Race organizer Jerry Harper expects another solid turnout, including one former Olympian who has confirmed his attendance for the run that starts outside the Westin and heads to hell and the turnaround point all the way back. So we have runners, we have walkers, we have joggers. We have pram pushes. I don't know if we're going to have any dogs doing 10K. But anyway, shiver me timbers. Come on out. Go to hell and come back. <laughs> Registration for the run is on Saturday at Tiki Beach on 7 Mile from 12 to 5. There will be no race day re registration on Sunday morning before the event.